Hello everyone, just a book review. Uh, Go Strong Into the Desert, The Mardist Uprising in Sudan, 1881-85 to by Lieutenant Colonel Mike Snook, who I believe has uh, written a couple of books on the subject and also possibly uh, done a documentary on the BBC. Um, it's uh, a book that I was, uh, I've had for some time and I was recently uh, reminded of it by uh, looking on Amazon and uh, I'd originally paid, I think I've paid uh, £28 for this particular book and uh, I was much surprised to see that it was, uh, it was used copies were going for £104 so I don't know if that's um, realistic or not but uh, it is a very fine book and um, I will get to some of the pages that are particularly relevant. I mean, it's full of maps. It's got the entire history of, uh, you know, the expedition from the earliest days up until uh, Omdurman. And um, not only has it got some magnificent pictures in it, but as I say, when you get to the the heart of the book and there's and there's plenty of illustrations which uh, will satisfy the war gamer you start to get to a part of the book which has got modern day photographs and i've never seen this before because i believe the uh, the area where these battles took place i believe it's now very sensitive um I think there's a Marxist government in control in that part of the world and they don't take too kindly to Westerners um, coming along and uh, and, and having a, a, a bit of a nose around. So, uh, yeah, it's uh, it, it's difficult to see. I mean, we've seen pictures of Zululand and Isamwana, but trying to actually... Uh, to see see these where these momentous events took place has been very difficult but anyway they got out there apparently he um the colonel obviously had uh, a sufficient kind of guard and uh, they got some wonderful pictures you, you've got here like the main street during a time when the, the marines and sailors were uh, coming ashore at sukin and um there you have the uh, the view today, the uh, customs yard gateway where the sailors were coming out in the picture on the right, and uh, that's how it looks today. Not not very much changed, but uh, the bits that have really interested me. Um, I, sh I shall go forward some way, as I say. There's there's so much. Um, you know, it's it's very well written, very uh, evocative, but. The pictures are worth it alone you know the when you get to the section for some of the big battles in the uh, in the desert you know you've got modern pictures and on laid onto them are the positions of the british and mardist forces and you just look at what is a an empty barren desert that's really not changed it's not changed one single bit it couldn't have done it's it's desert then and desert now and you look at this, and um, I don't know about you, but it's possible to look at that, as barren and empty as it is, and just imagine that full of British soldiers, camels, um, you know, cavalry at the perimeters, and uh, with the uh, the distant kind of um, dervish forces, you know, obviously with a cloud of of dust announcing their arrival, and just. You, you can actually go crazy just imagining. And um, there's, another, there's a picture here, um, you might be able to see the caption. The author below, the, beside the low stone wall built by the mounted infantry. And he was amazed to find it virtually untouched since January 1885. I mean, you look at that and you, you think that the hands of the men, who the, these were men who are long dead now, but this was done one day in January 1885 and it's still there as they place the stones one upon the other. And the other pictures, you know, they show the direction of cavalry attacks and skirmishes and uh, V-shaped biscuit box gun fault 
um, you know, you can, you can just imagine everything. You can you can really take these pictures and um, you know populate them in your mind's eye. I mean, look, Mardis Charge, just just empty desert but unchanged. You know, since those feet charged across there. British line of advance, line of flags of the dervishes, concealed main bodies. As I say, it's it's an empty desert, but my goodness, it doesn't take much to uh, to actually imagine what was what was going on here one day. And here we have the famous Colonel Fred Burnaby, who I believe was on sick leave at the time, but arranged to go with the uh, the expedition to try and save Gordon. And um, at one point, Burn Colonel Burnaby, with a uh, scatter shotgun, was caught and, and detached from the main body. And um, he was actually killed after uh, discharging his shotgun and uh, taking out a few of the enemy. But um, he, was, he was later buried on, on the field. And um, I believe the, uh, the, the, at, the, at the time of the funeral, on the day he was killed, as the troops went past, each soldier placed a, a small rock until there was a, a significant cairn built up. Uh, so every every uh, member of the expedition uh, put one little stone or pebble until uh, his body was covered up, and uh, and this is what remains now. Um, you know, you can see the line of attack again, and uh, you can still see the slightly raised uh, area where the colonel was buried. Um, here we have Abu Kru, which was another very significant battle um, that the Desert Force, the uh, the Camel Corps fought. Marvelous pictures, as I say, and um, you know it continues throughout the book um, in this this sketch. I mean, I personally, I I, I'm, I really enjoyed the modern day pictures. Here we have. Uh, a representation of the exact spot where the British square was and, re and repulsed uh, a dervish attack. You know, it's just all right. It's just uh, an empty desert. But as I say, if you're slightly crazy like me, you can uh, you can certainly uh, fill it full of uh, fighting soldiers. And this is a very nice book. And this is. Um, where one of the uh, one of the, uh, the 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 boats of the uh, the relief expedition came to grief, um, the Bourdain. Um, I believe there's still one of Gordon's uh, steamers is still, and, and there's a man himself. The traditional ending, though they now say he wasn't quite so passive as suggested in the Charlton Heston film walking calmly to his death but the that he actually fought um, and took several of his uh, enemies with him which according to his character sounds more likely um, picture of Gordon Pasha which is the one I think which is in the Waterloo 1815 Anglo Egyptian army uh, 172nd set um, yeah, some other maps, but uh, as I say, for me, for me, what makes this book is those modern day photographs. All right, call it an empty uh, desert if you like, but you can really, uh, quite unusual to see um, one of the Commonwealth war graves, but of the, uh, of the period. Um, Lieutenant Dallison, Scots Guards, March 1885. And again, um, another uh, depiction of a significant action overlaid on a modern desert scene. You think of all those guys out there, you know, the different re East Surreys, the different redoubts there. And um, yeah, the desert is silent now, but uh, there, there was once a lot of action there and a lot of... Uh, killing and um, heroic action and uh, terrible, terrible fighting, really. 
sight of a cavalry attack, withdrawal of the guards. As I say, you look there and you just think, the, these stones were laying there when, when all of this <laughs> fighting was going on. But I, I do get very enthused. I could look at those pictures for ages. I don't suppose I'll ever get there, but uh, I think that's a Mardi's tomb. Um, oh, the... From the, oh, the cupola from the original Mardi's. So, the, so the, the very top of the original Mardi's tomb, which I believe was, uh, was smashed up during the attack. But it's a lovely book. It's um, a marvellous book. I can't help feeling that the uh, the prices are... Um, well, I don't know. Sometimes you look for books and uh, they've just gone through the roof. But um, I, I would hold on if anybody's interested because I'm pretty sure... Um, I mean, the Perrys were selling it around about £30 uh, not too long ago. It may still be up on their site, but it is a marvellous book. But... Um, you know, don't buy it on Amazon at the moment <laughs> unless you've got plenty of money. Uh, any, anyway, this is um, something that's just bitten me recently. Again, um, I've always been interested in Colonial, but uh, I'm, I'm at the moment working on some 172nd Burgundians, as some of you might know. But uh, I intend to uh, invest in uh, the Sudan or the Gordon Relief Expedition. I've already... Uh, well, I've already ordered three boxes of hat, British Camel Corps. I've already got the dervishes. And uh, although I'm not fond of uh, hats, slightly sort of waxy, rubbery figures, they're the uh, they're the only game in town at the moment in, in respect to 172nd. So um, I shall get the figures, dunk them in uh, vinegar, as I've been advised, and um, that should decrease them to a certain extent. And uh, hopefully... Um, I'll be able to work with those. Um, I did paint many, many years ago, about 25 years ago. I painted, um, I think it was, uh, oh, what was it, Redoubt. I'm, I'm sure the figures were by Redoubt of the Camel Corps. I had about, I went crazy. I had about 50 of them and camels and everything. And I had a little uh, Arab street scene with markets, the dervishes, forces, Gordon. I, I had the whole deal, and I and I sold them, you know, like like we do over the years, and uh, moving from one place to another. And uh, yeah, I kind of regret it now. But um, anyway, I shall start again. The madness continues. Um, good war gaming and good modelling to everyone, and I shall speak to you again in a future video. Thank you.